have I got the treat for you today, guys. I have been looking forward to this for a good year. I was supposed to be here last June, but I got COVID. But now I'm at Scottsdale Golf to visit the brand new TaylorMade tour truck. Right, so this is Adam, the experiential technician at TaylorMade. Adam, talk me through the TaylorMade truck, what you guys do on tour and all the goodies that you have. So a normal week on tour, as you can see, Alex, these drawers here, they would contain the hybrid clubs. So this year we'd open it up. So you'd find that this year's new stealth product in there. So we'd have two, three, four, hybrid heads in there so again some of the players would come along we'd be able to take some of the heads out do some testing with the players and hopefully try and get some of the players into those heads as you can see here we've got some left-handed left-handed draw so you like to uh, bob mcintyre wow. would be you know testing some of these products the mc heads you've got high toe wedges in there some of the sim UDI, udis that's a lot of iron heads <laughs> yeah again the next draw down is just uh, driver head covers and wrenches there's only some wrenches in there at the moment. The tow truck hasn't been down to base and stuff to get all the stock uh, full, well, filled up because obviously we're a little bit far from a uh, European tour event, well, DP World Tour event at the moment. We are indeed. If we move along, again, you see some of the drawers. So these are the fairway wood drawers. You've got stealth 15 degree heads, 16 and a half, 19 and 21. We have got some fairway woods in here. So this is the stealth. Plus, so this is 13 and a half, 15 and 19. I think as you can see, there is 16 and a half, but that will just be in the stealth. There's some of the heads that are in there. Very nice. So do you carry a certain amount? So will these all be full up when it's the, yeah, uh, the tour know, event? Yes, at a normal event, all yeah. these drawers would be, they would be uh, full of stock. Okay, there's plenty um, there already. <laughs> yeah, no, they would be uh, <laughs> completely full, as you can see the numbers as well. The next row down is going to be the drivers. So as you can see, you've got stealth eight degree, you've got stealth nine degree and stealth ten and a half. So if you open these up, the difference when fitting tall players uh, to normal golfers on the heads, as you can see there where it says nine and a half, there will be a little tolerance on the head where you'll see on the loft, you'll have like maybe 9.1, 8.9. There will be a little bit, slight, the loft will be slightly different to the actual nine degree. So what some of the fitters will do on tour, we'll take three or four different heads so the players can do some testing. And what's slightly different to fitting a normal on a normal fitting event to a tour event is, uh, when you go along, obviously the loft sleeve on your, your everyday golf club on the shelf with, with a driver is a two degree loft sleeve. On tour, we have the ability to adjust them by one degree. So we've got a one degree loft sleeve that we can move one up and one down. And we've also got loft sleeves where we can go one and a half up and one and a half degrees oh, down, okay, interesting. which is slightly different. Yeah. So that's, that's another option when we're really trying to dial in on a certain launch and also you know, with shot shape as well, which is a, a little bit more in depth there. These are all the shafts that we carry for the on tour. We've got all the contracted players on the top. Uh, so you've got Dustin Johnson, Rory McIlroy, Tiger Woods' shafts are there, Tommy Fleetwood, Sam Horsfield's on that. We don't pay for any of these shafts. We get all the shafts free from all the manufacturers. Would you like me to show you Tiger Woods' shafts? Yes, Alex? please okay. do. I'm sure a lot of us so will want got, to see it. So these are Tiger Woods' shafts he uses in the woods. So as you can see there, you've got the Diamana 60. So that would be Tiger Woods' driver shaft. The 70 gram would be the shaft he would use in his three wood. Oh, interesting. And then what, the 80 for the... And then, yes, the 80 gram shaft would be what he would use in his five wood as well, as oh, you can wow, see okay. there. Do you see that a lot on tour with uh, players using the same, the exact same shaft from driver down to hybrid or is that kind of more personal preference it's, it's a little more per personal preference yeah. but it does happen as, as we've just seen with tiger woods but yeah some players will match match them up obviously go a little heavier in the fairway woods yeah. but it, it, it does come down to personal preference uh, we've got some shafts out here i'd like to show you these are the most popular shafts at the moment on tour yes they are so you've got the velico black uh, low launch, low spin. Yep. You've got the Velocore blue, again, mid launch, mid spin. And you've got the Velocore red, which is um, is the, the most high launching shaft in the, in the Velocore range. I'll just run you through some of the drawers that we've got. Yes, um, please some do. Of the wedge drawers and tours. So as you can see here, first drawer I'm going to open is going to be the MG3. And you've got 46, 48, 50, 52, 54, and 56 in the loft. Okay. So I open that there. Wow. So those. That's a lot of wedge heads. Yeah, different <laughs> options for them. Yeah. So we've got those. Uh, the next row down is going to be MG3 with diff diff different bounce options. So you've got 58 standard, 60 standard bounds, 58 low bounds, and 50. 
MG360 low bands as well. So there, there you go. It's another drawer wow. full of different wedges, just different bounce options. Yeah. How, um, how would, important would you say, this is a question that I always find myself coming across, how important would you say is wedge fitting for amateur golfers? Oh, it's, yeah, it's, I would say it's a crucial part of yeah. it. Of, you know, especially in certain places where people play. It has changed the concept how people fit for wedges now, you know, compared to maybe say 10 years ago, yeah. where if you would play like a Lynx golf course, most people would, you know, it's almost like the old school mentality, would just go low bounce, just presuming, yeah. obviously the ground's a lot firmer in the summer, they tend to use that, but we actually fit wedges off attack angle. So a certain attack angle determines really? the bounce of the golf club. So okay. if someone's very shallow through the ball, we tend to put them in low bounce. If someone, you know, the certain numbers we're looking for between say five and eight, we tend to put them in attack angle, but we put them standard bounds. If someone's very steep, then you know, you need to use high bounds in the wedges. And another good way of fitting wedges is always build the first wedge in your bag, maybe a 50 or a 52, the exact same makeup as the rest of the, um, your irons. So if you're one degree up in your irons, yeah. um, always make like your 50 degree the same that way and also use the same the same shaft that's in the in your normal yeah. irons. And then you tend to go a little softer into the 56 if it's a, a 52 is the first wedge in, and again a little softer in the shaft in, in the 60, and, and just try and just uh, flatten the lie angle. Great advice, really good advice. And next draw again, we've got some high toe wedges. So there's a lot to choose from from the tall yeah, players, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Some of the, yeah a some lot of to choose from. A little bit picky than others. I'm, uh, not, I'm not surprised. You've got, again, the next row down high, high toe with just different bounce options yeah. there. Standing low, we'll just open that one for you. Who would you, who would you recommend high toe wedges to? The high toe in the, in the lob wedge is uh, very popular on tour. Reason being, obviously, with the grooves now going all the way across the face. That's going to give the player so much more feel because the ball's going to obviously there's more grooves so the ball will stay on the face a lot longer so it's going to give them optimum spin yeah so that's that's a great option so some of the players on tour tend to change their wedges quite often uh, rory mcelroy tends to change his between every two to three events um really yeah he'll change his wedges that often <laughs> the norm on tours every somewhere between four to five weeks they'll tend to change okay uh, when jason day was a contracted player he would he was an exception he would change every three to four months okay because he used to like like to bed the grip in see also where he was striking yeah. the strike marks on the face but yeah McElroy will change his wedges every two to three weeks wow is that purely just so they can make sure it's got the highest yeah, quality performance just, every obviously time obviously McElroy's a lot more aggressive than your average golfer yeah. he hits a lot more drivers he's going in with a lot more wet you know short iron so he needs to get the you know the optimum spin that he can on it with of a, course that, that a new wedge will give him yeah the next roll down it's got some long irons in it uh, we've still Ooh. got some of the the gappers in there because we, we all know some players have got like a trusty club that they yes. like and hence to be a gapper. This is quite quite cool, I'll show you. We've actually got a 772 iron head, which is, no only, way. Which is only for tour only. I haven't seen that before a at all. A lot of players on tour <laughs> like using the 770. That. Obviously there's less offset than the 790 and it's a, yeah. a lot thinner profile on the top. That's terrifying. So, yeah, it's a little bit scary. <laughs> yeah. uh, next row down. And these are the scary ones, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, you've got some MCs there, some MBs. So. Again, if the player comes along and you know they wanted a combo set, we've got the ability on yeah. tour to, to make a set there. Obviously, we'd have to you know make the, the MBs a little stronger to match up with a set if yeah. they've got an MCs and the long irons, so that we've got the ability to do that there. Okay. Uh, the bottom drawer, you've got ah, the old school ones. You've got some of the old some, school yeah. ones. You've got some of the Tiger Woods irons. Yes. Uh, the TWs. Tommy Fleetwood actually has these. He does, doesn't instead he? Instead yeah. of the TW, obviously he's got TF for yep. Tommy Fleetwood there. If we move along, we've got some of the players' grips. We open this here. Wow. So you got Dustin Johnson's grip, uh, Martin Keimer, Charlie Hull is using the multi compound. McElroy also uses the multi compound. Tiger Woods as well, also. You've got Lucas Herbert who actually uses uh, a grip that's actually kangaroo leather. So I don't know if you'd like to feel that. I would like love to. Just to feel how feel how that's different. Oh, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> it's, uh, slightly different. Isn't It'll be it? interesting to see what it's like when it gets wet. Next row down, some more players. So how, how, how important would you say, I guess not just the type of golf grip, but the size of golf grip, how important would you say that is for even not just the professional golfers, but amateur oh, golfers alike? Key. Yeah, it's key. I mean, it key, you know, it's key to using the right size grips. Obviously, if the clubs, is, if, you ha if you've got really large hands, you shouldn't be using standard grips, no. you know. Again, but that's, you know, you, your club fitter will go through the, through the grip size yeah. with you and stuff. Yeah. So, this is uh, where players each week will come and collect their golf balls from and their caps and uh, some of their gloves. There's a 
quite a cool story for you. Each contracted player that uses the tailor mode ball who actually wins an event gets to choose a number. Uh, we brought this in a few years back and at the time Dustin Johnson was world number one and obviously he won an event and he chose the number one golf ball. Quite a funny story, a few years later Rasmus Hoygaard won an event and also wanted the number one uh, but unfortunately because Dustin Johnson had, had num the number one golf ball Rasmus Hoygaard asked to have the number zero one on his. Players like Lucas Herbert who got the number 23, he's a Michael, uh, massive Michael Jordan fan. So Matt Wills got the number 21, that's his age when he signed his contract with us. You've got some Martin Keimer's caps in here. Well, let's take so a look at those. Um, Hugo Boss with the Taylor made on, flower on the back from his uh, his mother's charity oh, wow. as well. You got some. I love one of those. <laughs> yeah, like it. yeah, very cool. Nice those, and you've also got it in blue as well. So how much stock on a, on a tour week? Would, you, would this be completely full up? Yes, say, this yeah. would, yes, this would be completely full. Yeah, we've got another drawer here where we keep some some spare caps as oh, well. Wow, okay. Again, some of the caddies would take some of these. We've got yeah. some other players' hats there as well. We've got Gavin Green plays there like the Maybach cap. Oh, cool. Camp. Stuff. It's a very really diverse range of all the product in terms yeah, of the yeah, accessories this, apartment, isn't it? Yeah, but this on a normal week, this would be full and also all the uh, all the players' yeah. uh, individual lockers would be full as well. Yeah, good stuff. Guys, smash the like button for this video looking around the TaylorMade tour truck. Thank you very much to Scottsdale Golf for inviting us down. An amazing venue. I absolutely loved looking around the TaylorMade tour truck and speaking to Adam about all the stuff that goes on there was really eye-opening. If you are new to Golf Minded, guys, hit that subscribe button down below. We've got a lot more exciting content coming with Scottsdale Golf this week, so stay tuned. Until the next video, guys, see you later.